Hi, my name is Josh Plotner, and this is how to write for English horn slash coranglay in three minutes. Let's start with the name because there's a little bit of confusion about this. Coranglay and English horn are exactly the same thing. Cor simply means horn, and anglais means English. Some people like to say coranglay, some people like to say English horn. Neither term is better than the other, they're just different. In this video, I'm going to use the term English horn just because that's what I grew up with. Also, just to be clear, French horn is a brass instrument that has nothing to do with English horn. So, English horn is an F instrument, which means that it transposes down a perfect fourth from concert pitch. I'm going to be speaking in transpose pitch for this video, but I will also put all the concert pitches on the screen. So, the range of English horn is from low B to high F sort of. While English horns can all go down to low B, some have a low B flat extension. The thing about the low B flat extension is that you can't play a low B when you're using the low B flat extension. That being said, there are some uncommon English horns that can play both B and B flat, but you should assume that your English horn player can only play down to a low B. As for the top range, English horn can play above high F, maybe to high G, but you should really stick to high F. Notes above F are going to be inconsistent, out of tune, and might not even come out on certain English horns. Unlike the oboe, English horn is pretty consistent dynamically through its range. <laughs> However, it doesn't get quite as loud. While it certainly can project due to the way the instrument and the reeds are made, it has a softer, more mellow sound. In general, this makes it really perfect as a solo instrument, but as an ensemble instrument, it can sometimes get buried. That being said, it blends great in an oboe or double reed section, and you certainly don't have to think of it only as a solo instrument. So let's talk about doubling on the English horn. When writing for a player switching back and forth between oboe and English horn, you have to remember their reeds. Double reeds are hard to deal with. They need to be soaked in water right before playing, but not for too short and not for too long. And they also dry out really quickly. If you write a really quick switch from oboe to English horn or English horn to oboe, you might end up forcing your player to play in a reed that isn't ready and is not going to sound good. Don't worry too much, oboists and English horn players are really good at strategizing when to soak their reeds, but just make sure to give them a little bit of time. On that note, if you're writing a beautiful, delicate English horn solo in the middle of your piece, make sure to give them something to play on English horn before that solo, otherwise they're going to be playing their instrument cold for the first time on their solo. Extended techniques on English horn are pretty similar to oboe, although there are a couple differences. First of all, because of the bigger reed, English horn players have an easier time than oboists scooping and bending the pitch. English horn also has an additional part called the bocal, which you can do a couple things with. For instance, you can play just the reed and the bocal. You can also take the bocal, stop up one end, and play it like a beer bottle. Besides that, extended techniques on English horn are basically the same as oboe. Flutter tongue. Tapping the keys. Buzzing into the body. Playing just the reed. Crowing. No sound aspirated air attack. Harmonics and double harmonics. The kiss or smooch effect. Playing the top joint alone and multiphonics. And that's it. Thanks so much for watching. Make sure to comment, like, subscribe, share, make sure to check out my Patreon, and I'll see you next time on Woodwind Wednesdays.